The top 10 coolest, most powerful mutations in the Resident Evil series. Not counting Wesker, because he will always forever be everyone's number one every day. So, that being said, here we go. Resident Evil. The Giants. The Giants are probably the weakest out of the strongest of all the mutations, if that makes any sense. Look, this is not a transformation that anyone would particularly like to partake in themselves, but as a resource, these guys are extremely versatile. They may not look like much, pretty simple even, but I guarantee any of these could take on any number of those. The El Gigante from Resident Evil 4 houses only one parasite which had to be destroyed if you wanted to have any chance at taking the beast down. And that's the beauty of this guy, you could shoot him as much as you wanted, but he's not going to slow down or even flinch. And by the time an army realizes what's going on, half of that army is already dead. It makes for a perfect vanguard of a creature and an amazing bullet sponge. Now his improved version in Desu, his skin is literally immune to bullet damage. Not just that, but it houses not just one, but half a dozen Plagas inside of him. Which means that even if you realize what's going on and you start shooting the Plagas, you still have to deal with a ton of them. And that's while the giant is still kicking your face in the meantime. Now, let's not be fooled. The giants are a threat. And probably one of the most important pieces in a zombie apocalypse army. Animal mutations. These probably form the creepiest, the most scary of all the mutations that are possible. I mean, a normal sized tarantula is creepy enough. But what about a 3 to 4 feet tall tarantula? That shit will haunt you forever. And that's just the start. Yawn from Resident Evil 1 was 40 feet long, with teeth literally the size of humans. But Bokarimu from Resident Evil 5 is a giant mutated scary bat. Hell, you can even find a mutated whale in Revelations 1. Wow! Let's not forget that size is not all that matters. We'll remember those Dobermans from Resident Evil 1. Probably the scariest motherfuckers I have ever encountered. My favorite though? Iluziha from Resident Evil 6. A massive snake that could turn itself invisible at well. It's like you grab Yon, right? Then make it immune to bullets. Then attach some chameleon DNA on steroids. And what do you get? A lot of game overs. The Tyrants. Simulations by Umbrella determined that only 1 out of 100 million test subjects could ever become a tyrant. That should give you an idea of how special and rare these guys are. Now, we're getting into the point where I could totally see people wanting to willingly transform into this, if you were given an option. Some of these guys are rather powerful. So powerful, in fact, that most of these guys were designed to wear a protective vest called a limiter that would prevent them from morphing further than their intended forms, which is why you see the handsome nemesis wearing his slick jacket. Regardless, these guys are very, oh my god, very resistant to damage. I would even go so far as to say that you wouldn't be able to straight up kill them by conventional means. The first tyrant we ever saw at the end of Resident Evil 1, you could only kill with a rocket launcher, and trust me, they get even better than that. That was just the experimental version. My favorite one was a tyrant formed under the sea virus, Ustanak from Resident Evil 6. Literally invincible. At one point, you throw him into pure concentrated lava. He probably swam in there for at least like 20 minutes. And guess what? He comes out still kicking. The beauty of this guy, however, was the fact that his intelligence wasn't hampered at all during his transformation. In fact, some scientists even believed that it was enhanced. This is a mutation that made him into a god, without harming his brain. People would kill for this one, and then kill some more. Ah! Ouroboros This mutation is very interesting because it is probably the only one that actually gets stronger if the merge with its human fails. You see, Ouroboros is very picky with his host. If the merge succeeds, then the human becomes a superhuman, similar to how a tyrant is. If it doesn't work, however, the specimen turns itself into a massive blob of black tentacles looking everywhere for things to absorb. For everything that it absorbs after that, its size increases exponentially, becoming bigger and bigger and more dangerous. This mutation does have its weakness though, that being fire. Fire automatically shuts down the mutation, weakening the bonds and exposing the heart of the creature in all cases. That being said, however, in a scenario where it said Euroboros creature would be, say, I don't know, swimming in the ocean, I could see it absorbing fish after fish, whale after whale, becoming bigger and bigger, being theoretically immune to fire since, well, I mean, the creature would be underwater, of course. In this scenario, the creature could potentially just take over the world. Derek Simmons. 
What makes this mutation so good is how versatile it is. Derek was able to transform himself into three different forms. A fast mobile canine looking monster that could shoot spicy carapaces at their opponent. A massive dinosaur that could crush armies and who also happened to be immune to bullets. And a giant flying insect that could regenerate itself by absorbing other living creatures. This all coupled with the fact that he seemed to be able to simply go back to his normal human form, albeit imperfect, at will. Yeah, sure, you won't look human, but you will retain most if not all of your intelligence and if the situation arises, you could swing wars just by yourself. I can see this being a lot of people's favorites. Pierce. Sadly, we didn't get to see much of this guy in action, as we only get to see him fight a boss battle and that's it. But man, was it cool. The enhanced C-Virus formula that gave Derek Siemens his transformations gave Pierce a different kind of present. A trident-looking arm that could shoot electricity at will. Electricity so powerful that could easily take on targets at least 10 times his size. The curious part about this mutation, however, was just that it was only the beginning. When Pierce suicides, he was only on the bare introduction of his transformation. Who knows what could have popped out of that shell if given the time. Chaos. Now this is one of those doomsday projects, reminiscent of things like a massive sentinel from the X-Men universe or looking at a human reaper in Mass Effect. Chaos is an incredibly big biological weapon, a super weapon that is, designed from the get-go to be the creature that would infect the entire world with its virus. Chaos had the ability to separate himself into multiple forms to attack various targets at the same time. He also had the ability to regenerate himself to full whenever he desired, by putting himself into a cocoon and standing still for just a few seconds. Virtually immune to damage from any form, it seemed that he was only weak to electricity but all it really did was stun him, never doing any real damage to him. An interesting ability he possessed also was the ability to change his size to fit his needs. If he was enclosed in a small room, he could simply morph his size down to better satisfy his requirements, or opposite to that, if he wanted to be a bigger threat, then he could increase his size astronomically. The most important factor to keep in mind, however, was that when he was released, he was only 70% into his starting incubation. Who knows what would have come out or what powers he would have possessed if it would have been allowed to come out as it was intended to. Hypnos T-Type. This one is a personal favorite. Look, it's obviously not as strong as, say, Chaos or as immediately versatile and useful as Derek Simmons' mutation, but man, does it have possibilities. You see, the Hypnos T-Type was a tyrant with an added feature. He was added the Hypnos gene. This gene is a modified genetic strand that, when implanted into an organism, would kill the weaker cells through natural selection, leaving only the strongest to keep the organism going and encouraging the reproduction of the better cells. This process of cell improvement was repeated hundreds of thousands of times a day. You see, the Hypnos type would never stop evolving. Every single day he would be stronger, faster and smarter. If his body would encounter a problem, it would solve it and become immune to it. Imagine this guy being the Resident Evil version of Doomsday. I mean, just imagine years and years of evolution this quickly. What would come out of that when this improvement came out simply in a few hours of combat? The possibilities are endless. Lord Settler. He might not seem like much when you actually get to fight him in Resident Evil 4. Hell, he might not even be as impressive as 90% of the mutations on this list. But you see, the beauty of Lord Sadler and the plague that infests him is that he has full control of it. If he wants to remain normal, he can do so. He looks human, smells human, even talks like a human. If he wished, he could live a normal, fruitful life without a problem. And that's the Plagueis for you, they don't change the way you look unless you want it to. And if you would so want to, then you could unleash your inner beast. But that's not the strength of this mutation. Its strength comes in a more tactical manner. You see, as a dominant Plaga, you would have complete control over any submissive Plaga, so you could build your own army if you so desired. An army that, by the way, would look completely human so no one would be the wiser as you go about literally taking control of entire countries. So yeah, Heos could go and challenge armies face to face or whatever, but you could literally take them over without them realizing with Lord Sadler's mutation. You could be the king of the world if you would want to. Cherry. 
might seem like a silly choice to you guys, but I guarantee if most people were given the choice of having a mutation, they would probably choose Cherry. You see, this girl was infected with the G-Virus by her dad on Resident Evil 2, but then given the antidote soon after. This means that the virus is inside of her, but controlled by the antibodies and heavily suppressed. What comes out of this is the ability to regenerate fully, kind of like Wolverine. If she's ever shot or dismembered, she could possibly just easily regenerate back to full. Not just that, but there's a big chance that she just doesn't age. She looks as beautiful as she will always look like thousands and thousands of years from now. She is, for all terms and purposes, biologically mortal. So yeah, you won't rule the world like Sadler would, but even he would die of age, even if that takes 100 or 200 years, while Cherry, Cherry will live on forever.